Hey guys, welcome here to my presentation for the Rappool Oil Seed Rape Week in the Baltics. I'm Simon Kröger, I'm working as a product development manager in the Rappool Oil Seed Rape product management team. And today I would like to uh, join, I would like you to join me on a tour here with a small presentation about inefficiency, about our findings as a breeder of oil seed rape uh, regarding this topic of inefficiency. Inefficiency is a topic that we discuss already since years. It's an ongoing topic in our breeding work, in our daily business really, uh, because we face difficulties regarding nitrogen every year, every time we get new restrictions from policy in the European Union, in every country, this is really a topic. And so that's why also in our oil seed trade breeding, it's really ongoing discussion about inefficiency and we are always testing this in our trials. As you can see here, this is really something uh, which is part of our breeding progress and it's our daily business really to make oil seed rape varieties more efficient and also to make more yield out of the same circumstances in a given location. And that's really what we call breeding progress. So inefficiency in fact for us is part of breeding progress. And you can see that. So you know all on your farm which varieties you have grown in the last days, in the last years especially. So you might know Wispy and Express as old Rapul varieties. In the time Wispy came out on the market, Wispy was more inefficient as Express because Wispy was at that time very high yielding uh, compared to Express. Later on then Mercedes was released. Mercedes was better in inefficiency than Wispy. And now we have varieties like Dominator, for example, uh, that are better in inefficiency than Mercedes because these hybrids were bred under the new circumstances, under climate change, under maybe different conditions in autumn with less insecticide seed treatment and all this finally has an effect especially also on the growth of our hybrids and finally also on N efficiency because nitrogen is of course one of the major nutrients we need in our oil seed rape. And all this is true because all of them, all these new hybrids, once they are new, bring more yield, bring better yield stability, especially uh, compared to the old varieties and compared to the checks. And that's why we do our work. So that's our daily work. That's breeding really to improve oil seed rape varieties. Now, when you looked at the presentation of Dr. Stahl, who is also discussing this topic of inefficiency from a more scientific point of view, he already introduced to you this equation uh, of inefficiency. And inefficiency is an um, equation of an uptake efficiency and an use efficiency. And on both sides of this equation, we can work as a breeder on different topics. So when we look at the uh, point of an uptake efficiency, what we can do as breeding is we can increase N uptake by first of all a better rooting system. So with deeper roots it's quite clear uh, and with quicker establishment of roots we can take up more water and with the water also more nutrients. In addition to that an increased N uptake can also be um, to taken into place by an increased vigor and photosynthesis. So also that's a topic we look at in our trials how is, for example, the autumn vigor of our varieties? With an improved autumn vigor, we also can take up more light from our sun. We can, take, we can make more photosynthesis. And with this, also more nitrogen is taken up into the plant in order to have more vigorous and more healthy plants over winter. On the other side of the equation, we have the end use efficiency. So how much nitrogen from the taken up nitrogen is really used in the plant? And also this, especially, uh, can be increased by higher grain yield. So that's always the main breeding goal is always higher grain yield for us and with higher grain yields uh, we all always use more nitrogen in the plant uh, and from the nitrogen which was taken up by the plant over the whole year. In addition to that we can also increase the end use efficiency uh, by assuring that these assimilates and assimilates here are especially the nutrients that are taken up by the plant are also transported to the right direction in the plant where we need to have them. So in the end for us as farmers it's not really important how much nitrogen is in the leaves, uh, how, much le how, ma how many leaves we have in our oil seed rape, but what we would like to have is grain yield finally and uh, of this as much as possible. So we need to have the nitrogen really in the grains and that's what we need to secure and this is also possible uh, with especially also uh, resistances of diseases 
uh, that we included in our varieties in order to really make sure the smoothest way possible um, from the leaves to the grains for the assimilates. So really for our breeding goal then in order to um, increase end efficiency we have a bundle of tools that we can use and these are especially uh, breeding for better root growth, breeding for resistances and also breeding for autumn vigor. So you're looking at the special breeding goals we can improve, um, especially here germination power and the strong root development. With the deeper rooting we take up more water and nutrients and all this leads also to a better nitrogen supply and a higher efficiency with less leaching because of course leaching is always a topic uh, also regarding the public, what is also often in the media, nitrate leaching um, is really present in many, especially uh, in very intensive farming systems. Um, so this is a topic where we also have a goal to reduce this really. Also this gives us options to reduce fertilizer. Fertilizer are uh, an input that we need to buy uh, and this is always or can be also quite expensive. That's why also here we give you also possibilities to reduce your inputs. With a better uh, rooting depth and uh, rooting broadness we also have a better drought and heat survival um, or this is really something we need to have in mind also regarding climate change. And with fast root growth also this protects our plants against oxidative stress under stagnant water. And this is especially a topic you might know in the Baltics because also in partly in autumns you have quite a lot of rain. Uh, you might have some parts at least on the field where you have stagnant water and also with a better rooting of the varieties they are more able to cope with this bad situation. And all this on top includes also the increases in uptake and also the nitrogen efficiency. And here you can see also what we daily do in our breeding work of all new varieties. We characterize a lot the rooting system of the varieties and we can see differences there. So we have a really long taproot here of our variety Dominata for example. Uh, but we also would like to have uh, this side roots here that go to the broader soil so that we do not use this strip really in the depth of the soil but more the broad uh, room between the two rows of the oilseed drape uh, should be used so that really everything uh, uh, of the nutrients that is in the soil can be taken up from the plants. The next breeding goal that is really important for us especially as DSV as one of the Rapul breeding companies are disease resistances. So with these disease resistances we can earn a lot in the plant. Uh, and here as an example I just added some disease resistances that we often use in our hybrids that are really important for farmers which are the FOMA disease resistances RLM7 and RLMS, the turnip yellow virus disease resistance and also the club root resistance which is really an important topic for some of you guys. Looking at how a disease resistance works I would like to show you shortly this example of the turnip yellow virus resistance. So what happens in the plant once it gets attacked by the turnip yellow virus? The most important ways in the plants are the phloem. In the phloem all the nutrients are really transported from the roots up to the sink uh, organs of the plants which are here the buds and the leaves and later on also the pots uh, and especially then the seeds. So the phloem is really responsible for the nutrient transports to the leaves uh, and to the sink organs. That's why it's always important really that this here is not interrupted by anything that could, um, in, uh, that could hurt here. For example diseases. Diseases always lower here the transport uh, mechanisms in the phloem and that's why uh, in the end we have less yield because in the end then less nutrients are transported to our grains. That's why we really need these resistances and especially the turnip yellow virus resistance is a resistance that cannot be um, substituted for example by insecticides because we know insecticides in autumn uh, against aphids don't work really a lot. That's why this resistance helps over the whole year really to save on the one hand insecticides but especially also to make sure that the nutrients can be transported up to the end uh, to the sink organs and that the plant is really as long as possible viable and uh, can make quite big grains also finally. So looking on then how everything is combined I would like to give you here the example of our new variety Duplo. 
So our variety Duplo must be an efficient already uh, because we have a combination of the, all the different traits and breeding goals in this variety combined. So we combine a turnip yellow virus and a Foma resistance to make really sure that everything is transported in the plant to where it should be. We have an optimum root growth and for optimum end uptake in autumn. And what we especially have in this variety is we have a very strong vigor for high photosynthesis and also additionally high end uptake uh, in autumn. And here you can see scores from the different European official trials for Duplo. And it has been really regarding the Czech variety, so the most important varieties in the countries, always one of the best variety uh, regarding autumn vigor. And this is something we really need in future with more drought in autumn, with difficult situations, with rainy, with wet or also with cold conditions. We need varieties that just move on and that press everything in their leaves and to make as much vigor as possible before winter. And that's what Duplo can do. And this you would see on the field, it's really vigorous variety. And on top, we also have quite good oil contents. Finally, what helps farmers also with lower nitrogen, some less yields also increase oil contents uh, can make up a bit more of profit, especially in countries where oil content is paid. So Duplo is a very specific case with a very good combination of different traits. But this is also true for different other varieties. Uh, all the new varieties like Metropole, Temptation, Bartis or Eurek, all of them join, for example, the turnip yellow virus resistance and also all of them really have nice autumn vigors. So this is really something that is coming out from our breeding. It's a fresh output of all the new varieties that include really different traits to optimize end efficiency. We can also prove that in the different trials. So we are also doing trials, a lot of trials regarding uh, nitrogen treatment where we give a 100% nitrogen dose, what is farmers practice in Germany here, for example. And on the other hand, we have a 60% nitrogen dose. So here it was 120 kilogram of nitrogen. And we can see also here clearly what I pointed out already before. Uh, when we look at the older varieties that you might know also, like Avatar or Bender has been former the biggest German variety. They were applied in 2008, 2012, and they still yield here quite okay in this trial with around five tons per hectare. But then when we go on and we see all the newer material also with, for example, Architect coming uh, also here as a turnip yellow virus resistant hybrid, then we have Duplo here as really the youngest of all these hybrids showing here perfectly the breeding success also with the highest yield here close to six tons already on average. So over the years we really see the improvement of one uh, quintal per grain yield per hectare on average and per year. And what is also really important is that hybrids need to be stable over the different environments and that's what I like to show here. So this is a trial that was carried out by our Rappul colleagues in Poland and uh, with a variety Dominator for example and you can see here in red this is one of the biggest European oilty grape varieties at the moment also this variety is carrying for example the turnip yellow virus resistance and together with this hybrid we tested Prince, Dominator and Duke three of our new varieties also in the different end treatments of 60 kilogram, 120 and 180 kilogram of nitrogen. And we can clearly see what makes a really good variety is that a, a modern variety with a very good end efficiency is really stable. No matter if you just apply 60 kilogram, which is of course very low, or if you apply 180 kilogram. In all of these cases, uh, our variety Dominator here, for example, in this orange bar is showing really perfectly higher results and stable higher results uh, compared to the biggest check. Now, what are we really doing is also something I would like to show you. So in Rapul with our different breeding teams of NPZ and DSV, we have collected more than 2436 data points on N efficiency only in the last five years. And this is only what we do in our product management trials. So also our breeders are really collecting a lot of data already in their breeding trials because they breed in low nitrogen environments. What's for example the case in France where we have already very restricted nitrogen applications in the official trials. We run these three systems here in the NPZ, DSV and also in Rapul Polska every year. So every year we get with a uh, different climate, new data points for this and every year we test also our new material of course 
for the point of N efficiency. So we are doing a lot of work and all over we have more than 10,000 individual data points over these five years uh, for the topic of N efficiency. So you can clearly see this is really daily business for us and we always have an eye on N efficiency. Now to sum it up, uh, the topic of N efficiency is not something new, it's really old, it has been always a key in Rapul breeding programs and this is really showing breeding progress at its best. Modern Rapul varieties like Temptation, like Dominata or also like Duplo uh, show the best N efficiency under the different situations because they are really adapted to the climate we have at the moment because they are selected in the breeding trials, in the climate and with all the difficulties we are facing now. The basis of this is their rooting system and also their ability to make high yields under different climates and pest pressures. And all this by really having a broad package of disease resistances like turnip yellow virus but also like FOMA resistances. And with less nitrogen supply, uh, varieties with high oil content also uh, are better adapted because they are more economically, because with a higher oil content, uh, farmers can partly outweigh lower yields. Uh, and this finally leads to better gross margins. Due to the high increase in the inefficiency of our Rapul hybrids, uh, we already found out that the most economical situa situation for farmers are already reached with just a level of around 120 kg of applied nitrogen. Uh, because when you look at uh, the calculation of how much you could save with lower nitrogen input and how much you could gain on yield by additional nitrogen input. Our results from Poland at least in the last years have always shown around 120 kg of applied nitrogen has shown in fact the best and the most economic results. So I hope I could have given you here some really nice insights into our breeding work and to also the topic of nitrogen efficiency in Rapul. And now the last point for me is to wish you good luck, healthiness and also of course a good harvest year as this is really our daily business um, in 2021. So goodbye.